Alright guys, welcome to a, another Sunco software video tutorial. And in this video we're going to take a look at writing queries against our database within Visual Studio. Now in the last video that we did, we created our table, uh, we set everything up and we created a stored procedure and converted that stored procedure into a method. Now in this video we're going to be writing some more queries only uh, these are queries that we're not going to be using uh, at runtime. Um, these are just going to be queries that we could execute through uh, throughout our Visual Studio project itself. So now the nice thing about writing queries is against the database within Visual Studio is we could save these queries and include them into our project and you could use them as templates throughout your project. Um, so let's just get started. I'm going to right click on our database name within our server explorer and we're going to choose new query. Now in our query window we can have multiple statements if we want and we can have them all run at the same time. So for example we could create a uh, create table uh, statement and an insert statement and a select statement and we can have all three of them run at the same time and it'll go in the order that uh, that we write the statements in. So as soon as we execute, it'll automatically create the table, it'll insert the data that we tell it to insert, and it'll select all the data and display it in a grid view down at the bottom here in the results. But for now, we're just going to focus on one statement at a time here. And the first one that we're going to do is we're going to create a new table. So we'll type in create table, and then the name of our table. So I'll just call this one websites and we'll put in open closing brackets and within here we are going to define our fields. Okay, So our first field is going to be an ID and the data type is going to be an integer, it's not going to allow nulls and it's going to be an entity field. Dent I can't spell. Dentity. Okay. So we assign it the identity because it's going to enable identity specification, meaning it's going to auto increment the records upon each new record that we insert. Okay, so the next field we'll create, we'll create a title field. Make that one a varchar 50. And the next one will be URL. And we'll make that one a varchar 100. Okay, so once we're done setting up these fields, we need to assign a primary key to our ID field. So we'll go ahead and do that by typing in primary key clustered. Now I'm not exactly sure what clustered means. Um, I haven't really looked into that yet. So, primary key clustered, and within open and closing brackets, we need to specify what field is going to be set as the primary key. So, in this case, it's going to be the ID field, and it's going to be in ascending order. Okay, so that's all there's to that. So, now I'm just going to refresh our tables folder here, just to show you that there's no other tables that have been created. So now we'll go ahead, we'll execute this statement. Then if we go ahead and we refresh. Now you can see we have our websites table with our, uh, with our fields. Okay, so now we'll just uh, show you that there's no, uh, no data in there. So you can see that I'm highlighting this statement here. Uh, if I was to not highlight it and just execute the query, we, we would get an error because our table has already been created. So to run individual uh, statements, uh, you just highlight or select the statement that you want to execute and then hit the execute button. 
Okay, so you can see that there's been no data in there. So now let's go ahead, let's insert some default data. So we're going to do an insert into websites. And within our brackets here, we're going to define the fields that we're going to be inserting into. So it's going to be title and URL. And then the values. So we're going to hard code some, uh, some values here. So Google, and then the website URL. Let's go HTTP google.ca okay then I'm just going to select this line and I'm going to put a I'll put a couple more in there let's do MSN MSN then Visual Studio Online dot com. Visual Studio Online. Okay, and then that sh should be good. Actually, I forgot to close these brackets off here. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to select uh, these three statements here, and we're going to execute. And you can see that three rows have been affected. So now let's go ahead and let's run our select statement. Select start from websites, and we'll select that, and we'll go ahead and we'll execute it. Okay, so now you can see that we have uh, three records into our database. Okay, so another query we can take a look at, and this is uh, there's so many queries that uh, that we can write against. So, for example, we could do uh, let's go select title title from websites. You can see that we just got our titles back. We can do select star from websites and put in a where clause where title equals MSN. And I misspelled select. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead, let's execute that. And you can see that we have uh, the rollback from that. So now we can do uh, delete from websites where oops, where so where ID equals one. Okay, so we're going to delete and then we'll select at the same time. So we'll select star from uh, websites. Okay, so if we just select that right now, you see that our ID uh, of Google is ID 1. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll execute these two statements here. So it's going to, it should delete the uh, record ID of one which is Google and then it should give me the results back uh, which should only be MSN and Visual Studio Online. So we'll go ahead and we'll execute that and you can see that that's uh, exactly what happened. So now to finish off this video we are going to um, delete our table because I'm no longer going to need it. So in order to do that we're just going to do um oops drop table and then the name of our table that we want to drop. Okay, so we'll select that and we'll execute it. 
and it was done successfully so now if we go ahead and we refresh now you see that our websites table has been removed okay so now if we want to save this as a template for example then we can just click save and then give her a query name uh, we'll just put in let's call it statements I guess and we'll click save okay so now that saved our statement let's see if it actually shows up in here okay so if we click on all files it's currently hidden from the project so if we right click on it and go include in project so now you see that we have our SQL statement in there so like I said you can use this as a template so we can create a new folder call it queries you can write an insert statement as one file a insert statement as another file delete statement as another one and so on and so forth so now if you ever want to create a table real quick you can just open up your uh, SQL file, give your table a name, and then add your fields and and uh, go on from there. So I hope this uh, video has helped you. Like I said, it's just writing queries against the database. It doesn't have anything to do at runtime. Um, so yeah, I hope this video has helped. If it has helped you in any way, uh, please smash up the like button, uh, thumbs up, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next video.